The SVBONY SV605CC, seen here connected to the SV550 refractor, is probably one of the cheaper upgrades you can make to your imaging gear. Astrophotography is expensive and SVBONY has been known to make budget astro gear for quite a while now, and the SVBONY SV605CC is no different. This is a full-sized astrocam, a cooled astrocam for a budget price. Hey, it's Nas from Nas on me and today I'm going to review the SV605CC which is an IMX 533 square one inch sensor tech cooled astrocam. That's a mouthful. And SVBody sent this to me to test. This is a loaner. This is one of those products that are going around from one person to another to review and I am next in line. The SV550 refractor is in the same boat where it is a loaner and is going to go to the next person who is going to review it. I still have it because it looks like SV Boney hasn't found someone else to review it. So if you are looking to review something, hint, hint. Going back to the camera, I mentioned that this is an IMX533 sensor. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact same sensor as the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. I went over this camera a couple of years ago when I moved from a DSLR to an Astrocam, and I compared the field of view and the noise, etc. And this is the exact same sensor. I did buy this used, and I believe I paid $750 at the time, which was only about $50 less than retail. Crazy when you think about it. Maybe it was $700. But this one, brand new, costs $599, which is incredible for the exact same sensor. Very similar cooling system. Feels the same, looks the same, and, and performs the same. It does have the square sensor, and as I mentioned in my 533MC Pro video, it takes a little while to get used to the square sensor, but once you get used to it, you understand the benefits of it. So first, framing with this kind of sensor is much easier because you don't have to worry about orientation. Whether it's this way or this way, you'll know that it's going to be square no matter what. And since it's such a small sensor, that means you can use an OAG or other accessories within your imaging train and you don't have to worry about vignetting or shadows. And another huge benefit of a small sensor is that this is a one inch sensor, this one inch diagonal, which means you can use one and a quarter inch filters. Yeah, square sensor is great. And I did eventually move from my 533MC Pro to a 2600MC, which is an IMX571 sensor, a crop sensor much bigger than this. And one of the things I don't like that much about a small sensor is that the field of view can be very narrow, especially if you have a large telescope with a narrow field of view to begin with. Of course, you can get around that by doing mosaics. I have done mosaics before. It's it, They're more time consuming and with the amount of clear skies I haven't been getting here in New England, they've been really annoying. So for testing, I want to keep the imaging gear as close as possible. And in fact, I piggyback one telescope on top of one another so that I image the exact same object the exact same night with the exact same sky conditions. Of course, the telescopes were different. They weren't the same telescope, so there is a little bit of difference there. So this testing isn't a one-for-one -one comparison, so take it with a little bit of grain of salt. For the testing, I used the SV550 triplet with the 605cc, which is an 80 millimeter f6 telescope, which is a focal length of 480 millimeters. And I used the 1x flattener that came with the scope. For the other one, I use the Ascar 71F without a reducer, and it's a 71 millimeter f6.9 telescope with a focal length of 490 millimeters. So similar, but slight differences. The Ascar is a quadruplet as well, and the field of view is very similar between the two. I also use Botanoff masks to focus both of these, even though my 71F has an EAF co connected to it. I use that to focus, but I use the Botanoff mask to do the focusing, not electronic focusing. So I didn't refocus throughout the night just to make sure that I don't have to deal with that with my dual setup. Let's quickly go over what comes in the box if you order this camera. This is not a traditional unboxing since this is already pretty much unboxed. It came unboxed to me. I'm just going to quickly go over the camera itself and what comes with it. So this is the camera body. We'll take a closer look at this really soon. I'm going to set this to the side. Along with this in the box, we'll have a user manual. Super handy. You can also find this online. We have the 12 volt power adapter. This is the power brick. It also comes with the wall plug. It's in the box. I actually have not used this. I've been using the one that came with the SV241 power box. We have our standard spacers. So we have the 16.5 millimeter and the 21 millimeter spacers here, exactly the same, except that there are no labels on this, but they feel the same. This also comes with a one and a quarter inch nose piece, which is kind of handy, especially if you want to use it with systems that have no threading system. So you can't screw the camera in. So this is, this is kind of handy. It also comes with a one and a quarter inch adapter if you ever need this. 
along with some sponge washers. I believe there's three of them in there. I don't have any use for these. And, and this, at least this one came with a couple of different sets of desiccant tablets. So if you ever find that your camera is getting moisture in the sensor, it's not supposed to do that. There are some desiccant packets or desiccant tablets here to absorb the moisture. There are ways to dry those out and reinstall them, but it's always better to just get something new and these came with it. So there's two sets of these, so pretty neat. Looking at the camera itself, we can see the square sensor there. This is the IMX 533 square one inch sensor. Looks really nice. The camera body itself feels really good. Looks really nice. I do like the gray color. And if you look at the back, we can see the fan and we have a USB 3 input and a 12 volt 5 amp input as well. One thing you'll notice if you compare this with a ZWO model, so this is the ZWO 533 MC Pro, is that this comes with a couple of USB 2.0 out slots. So this is, has like a built-in USB hub, which, which is actually really neat. And I wish the SV605CC came with this, but this is $599, this is $799. So for $200, you can buy yourself a USB hub and an extra SV241 if you need it. So compromises. But if you look at the sensor and we compare them, they are absolutely the same. And I didn't mention this earlier, but this does come with a SV Boney padded case. Feels nice, feels secure in there. The specs claim to have a unity gain of 100, and I put that to the test by using SharpCap's sensor analysis tool, like I usually do with all of my camera gear. At 100 gain, it has an electron per AD of 1.01, and that is actually the closest to unity gain that I've ever seen. It could have been my setup, but I used the exact same setup when I tested the TubeTech camera last year, so interesting. It has a read noise of 1.95 electrons. And this chart here shows that we get a full well depth of 50,000 electrons at zero gain. So for some reason, if you need the full dynamic range, you do zero gain. But for the most part, we'll have trouble filling up the well depth of 16,000 that you get with a uh, unity gain of 100. And with the gain of 100, you'll get the most benefits of signal to noise ratio, the biggest bang for your buck there. Now let's take a look at the images of M3 and M13 that I've taken with these two setups. Starting some image analysis, I want to first look at a 600 second dark. So this is just to check if there's any kind of amp glow here, and there doesn't seem to be. We do see some weird banding pattern. I believe that's because just how the stretch works and how the sensor is kind of reacting to a dark frame. But when I unstretch this, it goes completely black. And then when we take these images and stack them and average them out, it's all good. So now we're going to look at a couple of different objects, the M13 and M3, taken with both setups on the same night. So let's compare the single image of the M13 taken with the uh, 71F, 533MC Pro, and the SV550. Um, so we can see the two results here. They look very similar. They look very similar. This one actually looks a little bit brighter. So this is with the... Uh, 605cc. It looks a little bit brighter because it's actually a faster scope, right? It's an f6 instead of an f6.9, but they're both 120 seconds at negative 10 degrees Celsius. And I can't really see anything else. This is already, uh, yeah, already an STF on it. So it looks pretty, pretty okay. Um, the only thing you'll notice is that on the bottom right hand side of the 605cc is that there's a, there's some dust. So some, I think some cat fur may have gotten into my imaging train and luckily it landed on the corner so i was able to uh use flats to remove most of it but then but i had to actually crop in a little bit more but you can see that the field of view looks really similar if you look at the single images of m3 it's going to be the same thing a little bit darker or it's actually the same i didn't have it stretched but you can see it's the same thing um this is 605 cc i switched them around so you can see the dust mode at the bottom here but you know, like looking at the noise, looking at the data, it looks pretty clean for both of them. So they look very, very similar. Now, if we look at the stacked product of the 533MC Pro versus the 605CC, so here you can see that the dust or the piece of hair like moved a little bit. So my flats did something, but not completely. So I cropped those out in my final imaging, in my final processing. And you can see the data here. So if I zoom in to M13, and honestly, I can see more blue stars. This is just a stacked image. This, this is no post processing has been done on this, but you can see, I can actually see some blue stars uh, more clearly than the 5 MZ Pro setup. It 
I don't know what the reason for that would be since they're the exact same sensor. It could be the speed of the telescope itself or what, but we can see the blue stars here, here, but uh, the 605cc looks a little bit more blue, a little bit more colorful, I think. Yeah, but you can see that there are this this little pinched thingy is because of the uh, SV550. Uh, I think we discovered that with Rich's video from Deep Space Astro a while ago. Quickly look at M3 for both of these. Again, I switched those around. Um, you can see the dust mode there, but you know it looks looks pretty good. You know this is just stacked version, nothing too serious. We can see it's the same gradient basically, and now. Right, let's look at the final stacked product. So we can see the left-hand side is the 523MC Pro and the right-hand side is the 605cc. You can see that I cropped in a little bit more to try and get rid of the dust mode, but some of it's still there. But going in, like both of these, they look really nice. I did my best to keep the processing as similar as possible. Uh, I think I may have done a little bit more saturation on the 605cc, but you can see in terms of like resolution and and clarity and how it was processed is it's very similar there's a little galaxy here yeah this actually looks a little bit better on 605 cc probably because the telescope had a little bit better resolution at 80 millimeters so there you go there's a good benefit there and finally looking at m3 we can see similar processing for both of these It's a little bit better. If you look at the, if we zoom in, so I did do some denoising. Uh, you can see I did the exact same denoising here. So I processed these side by side. Um, there's a little bit more noise here, but it could be a variety of reasons. Pro could be somewhere else in my processing. But I do kind of see, it's a little bit hard to see, but I do kind of see some banding here. Uh, I don't know where that's from, where the 533MC Pro doesn't have it. So no, again, nothing nothing that I'm concerned about because I can I can definitely edit this out or process this out if I wanted to. We have a galaxy there, galaxy there. I believe the SV Boney SV605CC is an excellent budget and starter astronomy camera. It uses a well-known and trusted sensor that we've all been using for years. And for my testing, it holds up really well, including the cooling system. One thing I did notice is that I don't think that this comes with high gain mode, at least not available in the firmware. and. What that is is basically the ZWO cameras. When you hit unity gain, they turn on high gain, gain mode automatically, where the electrons per ADU needed to fill the ADU is about a third, which lets you get data a little bit faster than if you were just using unity gain as is. And we did notice this here because at 100 gain, we had just about one electron per ADU, which is kind of impressive. But if it had high gain mode, we would get around 0.3 or 0.33 gain per or electrons per ADU. Again, not a bad thing, it's just something that I noticed. And at $599, I kind of wish that I bought this when I switched from a DSLR to an Astrocam. Unfortunately, this wasn't released when I switched to an Astrocam, so didn't have this available. So I ended up with the ZWO 533MC Pro, what I paid around $700, right? Have to look that up, but I did buy it used. Thanks to SE Boney for sending this to me to test. It's been really fun. I wish I had more time with it. I wish I had more clear skies. And at this moment, I don't have a code to give you to save if you want to order this, but if I ever get one, it'll be in the description below, so check there. There's also a referral link that you can use to order the camera. If you use that, I would greatly appreciate it because it would help me out quite a bit. And if you'd like to support me further, check the description below for a link to Patreon and consider becoming a member. I do have a free membership to Patreon as well, where I'll post some stuff just for members trying it out, so let me know there. And if you have any questions about this camera or anything I've ever covered, let me know below. Until next time, cheers guys.